What's up everyone? I decided to make a video with commentary on my thought process on what I do in this video because I noticed that a lot of people appreciate the tips I have been providing them when buying buses for my other characters. If you are watching this video, you're probably interested in solo carrying Valtan or two-man carrying, so I hope it helps you out. I will cover the differences in normal Valtan and hard Valtan, so let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and I'll try to answer them. That said, it is a DPS check to be able to perform the hard bus as a solo. Um, Timestamps will be included in the video description or if you hover over the slider, you should be able to find chapters that may be relevant to you. Anyways, let's begin. So to start off, um, battle items, if you're solo bussing, you always want to start off with either Darkness or Whirlwind Grenade, depending on how much stagger your class has. I ran Whirlwind here because I have no faith in Gunslinger or Gunslinger stagger, so you can either pick one or the two. Ideally, you might want to pick Darkness Grenade so that you can meet the DPS check a lot easier. Um, for your second battle item, you'll want Sprinter's Robe and Panacea. And if you're solo bussing, you we'll probably want to use red pots. So I'm only going to cover the clears where, you know, I was able to kill Wolf. The very first time I did this in my other video, I forgot to press Panacea, but this one is a clear with Enrage. Um... So you just keep DPSing from bar 50 to 46, and then it should phase into a red wolf. It's pretty simple. I will go over some of the mechanics. If he does a tornado, I'll talk about that. And this is a strategies that you basically learn in home mode, if you guys haven't tried that out yet. All right, perfect. So as you can see, his back indicator um, is on the opposite side. He's facing directly towards me. So in this very specific scenario, uh, the very first set of shurikens will be on the cross. So it will go down this way, and then it will go down that way. So you basically just have to run towards one of these safe spots in the yellow line. I'll let it play out a little bit. Yeah, and then right after, it's northeast, southwest, depending on the frontal or back indicator. And then the last one is also across. And by cross, I mean the X, not a plus sign. So once you reach bars 46, um, that's when it usually phases into a red wolf. There are a lot of patterns where you can get free DPS off. If you're like an ignition sort, it can be pretty cope when the invader comes in, but I can go over that. That can help him be less cope, kind of. Uh, if you have enough item level, uh, you probably don't need a purify rune. So right about now is when the invader should spawn very soon after this tornado, I presume. Or, you know, one more bar of HP right here. So if you're an, inv if you're a, if you're an ignition sort, right? When it's at bar 41, that's when you let the burst out so that you could push the HP bar without them having to group up. That's one way around it. Um, the other way is to just continue kiting red and blue. If you move far enough, um, 
the red will do one of two things. They will either either jump at you and lunge into a spin into an explosion, or they will do a tornado. So like right here, they lunge and then they spin and then an explosion right here. They will usually do one of two things. And then the blue wolf will always do this line where you could simply just keep kiting it so that the both of them are separate. In Korea, or like I guess in the other servers where you have more gear, you just straight up face tank them and just DPS check it. Here, you gotta finesse it, kind of. So when he's doing these uh, vertical lines, you have blue chasing you and you get free DPS where you can send one home. So you just keep kiting them. So again, he jumped forward, he spun, and an explosion's gonna happen, yep. The only way around this is honestly to just keep doing damage. When they're grouped up, it's not really worth um, hitting them both unless you're extremely overgeared, like 1580, 1590. But if you're like in NA or EU, you're probably not going to be able to output enough to make that worth your time. Because the DPS is pretty tight as a solo buster. Alright, so right about here, bar 37 is when it disappears. And if you ever did Hell Mode or Inferno, after the invader disappears, Red Wolf will always do a tornado. Always. So you just go out of it, and then, you know, just keep kiting it like you normally do. This is where Darkness Grenade would come in handy because you can push this phase a little bit faster. Um, the reason why you want to push this phase is because this is where darkness begins to set in. So the shorter you're in this specific part of the fight, the better. So as you can see, darkness first stack, and I'm getting bing bonged. If you're running darkness, I think uh, you can push through this phase if you're geared enough without having to get grabbed. So I think I'm about to get grabbed because I'm at four stacks right here. And there you go, I got imprisoned. As usual, you just keep DPSing it until the orb spawn in about 1 HP bar. Another indicator of when the orbs are spawning soon is when the stagger bar disappears. As you can see, it disappeared from 10 seconds ago. So right here, if you're, you know, solo bussing, you stand from the south side so that you can usually pull in all the orbs. But if you're solo, it's going to happen anyways. But if you're dual bussing, your partner is going to be on the south side. And personally, I like starting on the right side of the wolf. And then, you know, you have to collect all these orbs in sequence. So you pop Sprinter's Robe right here. And then you pop Panacea right here. You collect them all and then you throw your Whirlwind if you're running Whirlwind like me. Um, you throw out all your stagger. I ran Overwhelm Rune on my last request. 
I believe you don't need Overwhelm Room, but I run it anyways because it's either that or a Bleed Rune on Spiral Tracker. A tip for the blue bombs is you could spacebar into it and then they won't fan out the extra freezes. That's just a thing that you learn in Inferno. So for this specific part, it's just a straight up DPS check. You want you want to push this phase as quickly as possible. Although what I did notice was that this was a lot easier than having to do blue as the invader because red right now is just setting up there doing his own mechanics. While you get free damage and as I, I as I mentioned earlier, you know, sometimes the red wolf comes jumping at you and then spins and then an explosion happens. For the blue wolf, when he spins in place, it makes a it makes an explosion similar to the red one. So that's something that you should keep uh keep in mind of. Also, another thing for this specific part is that the red wolf really likes doing the line mechanic and he also likes doing the uh tornadoes. So as usual, you just keep kiting them. Again, you know, Red Wolf does the lines while you get free DPS on blue. And then sometimes it jumps at you and then you just keep kiting it. It does tornado now and then you get free damage on blue. And then he spawns a blue grenade, which doesn't hit me. So now you just keep pushing DPS until it becomes bar 15, bar 16, which is when orb happens. If you're geared enough, you can do what I'm doing, which is face tanking the damage. To be honest, if you're trying to solo bust this, you kind of need to be pretty, pretty geared because if you're constantly dodging, you're probably not going to meet the DPS check. Unless you have like, you know, very, very good uptime, which I don't think I do. Because it's my first time doing this. <laughs> I never really had confidence in performing this until today. So as usual, you wait here. And then, since I like starting on the top right, Sprinter's Robe into Panacea, collect it all in sequence. And then last request, Sharpshooter, Catastrophe, Ulti. And then, you know, if you have a Whirlwind Grenade, you can also throw that as well. And then you just go south. And then from here, as you can see, I have two minutes remaining until it's Berserk. It's pretty slow for me. I am not pretty optimal for this fight. But whenever blue phases into purple, he will always have a color on his gauntlet. So his first two moves will be throwing two shockwaves at you, and then he spins to drop the bomb, and he leaps backward. And right there is uh, when you can get some free DPS uptime. Again, you know, the very first set of shurikens from Purple Tornado is across, and then northeast-southwest, and then across. 
You can use the frontal or the back indicators to know where to stand. And this is what we call Boogeyman. Make sure you dodge that. Uh, in this specific phase, you want to be very conservative with how you use Spacebar because you will need to dodge or immune to fears. Again, whenever he throws a grenade on the floor, he always jumps backward. Again, right here is when I cancel my spacebar a little bit too early, so I got feared. If you have Awakening, you can tier 3 immune it with the Awakening, or you can spacebar it. The very first swipe won't kill you, but the second will. So it's very important that you spacebar or tier 3 immune the second fear or, or later. Again, dodge the boogeyman. Be very, very careful not to use spacebar because you're going to need it. Again, when you see him having a, a bomb in his hand, he will throw two shockwaves, spin, and then jump back. Right here is the fear, so I saw it, and I held down spacebar. There we go, we immuned it, and we survived. Now it's just uh, you know making sure that it dies within the next few seconds. In my specific case, it did not, and I am out of pots, so it went to Berserk. This is where uh, Darkness Grenades come in handy, so that you can meet the DPS. Luckily for me, Thyrain was right about to come up, so I casted it, and we finished. Very nice. All right, so I'm going to skip over to to my vault and clear. Um, let's go find where it is. All right, let's go over battle items for vault in. The two battle items that you really need for this specific bus for actual Vaulton is Darkness Grenades and Time Stops. You don't really need Sprinter's Robes. Um, normally that slot would be Destruction Bombs if you were to do the run normally with other people. But given that you were trying to bus, I mean, you could put that in so that you could run away from the orbs that would spawn in the three silence counter mech. Um, I'll talk about that later, but let's play the video. So it's very important that all of your passengers die to this very first spin, or if they don't, it's very important that they line up right on the very first charge. This is because you want this pillar to break. You want the orbs. Um, so the reason why you want the orbs is because you get Esther Gage. And that really adds up to be a lot. So the reason why you also want to stand directly above Valton after the first charge is because Valton will turn, turn towards you and jump axe spin and break this platform which would otherwise to have the next set of orbs so you want to make sure that you always stand directly 12 o'clock or you know 11 50 o'clock um above Valton after the first charge and right here is when he spins yep now it's also very important because right after the spin is when Valton will do the second charge. You want to make sure that you line it up on this top left pillar so that you could get the orbs to break. 
And then right after this is when Voltan will be doing a three hit combo. So this is just free DPS uptime for you or your partner. If you're solo busting, this is where, you know, when you pick up all the orbs for Esther Gauge. Eight anchors will fall, and then you can go out. Um, so after this uh, circle explosion happens, it's very important that you don't hit Valton here because you want Valton to start the charge animation. So you line up on this specific wall because you want the orbs again. And you dodge it. Okay, so right about here is when your gauge would be almost full. Again, you would just dodge all these anchors. You dodge this red circle. You come down. That's when you DPS Halton. So you just keep pumping DPS in this specific phase until Valton does a charge. Ideally, you want to make sure that you don't angle Valton towards any of these pillars because you still need to destruct one piece of his armor. It's just a straight DPS check right now. So at this specific moment is when I have my Esther gauge and Valton begins his charge animation. You line it up, you thigh rain, you break one piece of armor, and then you will also be phasing it. It's just free DPS right now. So this is the 130 bar that most people would usually ball Thor if you're doing it with like a pug. Um, it's very important that you dodge the red lines because if you don't, you will die. Um, well, my recommendation is to always stand nearby or right behind him. And then from here, it's just, you know, Valton doing normal attack patterns. It's just a straight up DPS check. And this is when Valton phases. He breaks the outer layer. Uh, if you throw down an AoE skill and run towards the north, you can proc him to do a spin, which gives you free DPS uptime. This doesn't always happen, to be honest, but sometimes it works. I just tanked the cross right there because I wanted to get out my last shot for focus shot. And this is where Valton phases. He will spawn four pillars and put a gigantic pizza on you. Uh, this is also a phase where you can get free DPS uptime. So how do you know when to move out? So if you look at these lines on the sides, so these lines, these thick lines, they will thin out. As it thins out, that's when you know that it is time to leave. So as you watch, it's thinning out right here, and I leave and continue my DPS. Um, so I noticed that my Peacekeeper was on cooldown, so I just dodged it. And because Walton didn't hit anyone, Walton will continue to 
charge and do the counter animation. So the first one was what? Two charges or two two fists onto the ground and, and it's counter animation. This one's also two, but it's a little bit faster. Again, you know, I felt like I was a little bit too far, so I didn't go for it. But then this last one is very fast. So just one time and then there you go. That's the counter. It only puts down the fist one time for the very last charge animation. Um, because they're solo busting, you generally can sometimes uh, greed for damage here. For the four hit combo, uh, Vault unlocks after the third hit, so it's free damage. Just gotta dodge the first one, two, three. Um, I missed my counter here because I was slow in my gun swaps. Um, so how do you know when they're doing the three anchor mech? When Vaulting crouches and turns green, that's when you know it's the three anchors. So you run towards the center, make a little loop, right? Just go out and then in. And this outside in. Just overall, you know, just free DPS uptime. So Valton does a cross. I greet it for the full uh, sharpshooter. So when he does this specific mechanic, his left hand makes the fist, and then you get petrified. You want to make sure that you're healthy at all times because this can deal a decent amount of damage if you're uh, pretty undergeared. It deals even more if you're doing a 2 bus 6. I highly recommend that you do not 3 bus 5 because usually what this mechanic does is it wipes your party and it's very very unlikely that some people have the reaction time to throw out a flame grenade before it happens. So right here is a free counter. Oh yeah, another thing to touch on uh, in regards to counter is that every single time you land a counter, you get side reel gauge. So it does help you out later on into the fight. So right about here is when Valton does the first stage break. Usually that happens at around bar 88 to 85. Again, you know, just some free DPS uptime. Uh, going back to what I was mentioning earlier, you can look at the lines on the edges. As it thins out, that's when you know it's time to leave. Okay, so for this specific mechanic, um, you yourself won't be able to stagger it. So this is where you have to time stop. So you just keep letting the animation play out, and when the stagger bar disappears, and the axe is about to slam down, that is when you time stop. Outside in. If you're a gun lancer, you can just tank all these hits. Um, if you tank the first one, Valtim will, won't, will not do the second slam. Um, so in this specific video, or specific bus, Valtim did the Stagger Orb a little bit too close to Hellfire Orbs, or otherwise known as Cardinal Orbs. Uh, if you land the counter here, you get free free gauge, but I missed it. But as you can see, my time stop is not up yet. Normally, in regular buses, you would time stop the specific mechanic because it deals a lot of damage. So in order to offset that, I just topped up and I tanked the entire thing. Obviously, this would be a complete wipe if you are not as geared as I am. Oh yeah, and also, um, if you're going to try to tank it, make sure you at least pick up one orb. 
so that you only take three ticks of damage. And as you can see, three ticks of damage did about 115,000 to me. And from then to now, it's just a DPS race because I experienced a lot of mechanics and I am running short on time. I want to push Valton as quickly as possible to bar 65, but he performs another portal mechanic here. <laughs> and, you know, I just so happen to get Bing bonged everywhere. And he's barf 65 now, so it should trigger the counter very soon, which is right now. Um, I'm going to turn on the volume so I can explain a little bit more about this specific mechanic. You can listen for two grunts. So wait for him to lock, he's locked onto you, and then you hear the first grunt, you try to go for a counter on the second grunt, but if you miss it, you can always dodge out. So your next question would be, how do you know when this counter happens? When Valten locks onto you, imagine that you are listening to his two grunts, and you just have to time your counter, basically. And right here, I landed it. With 3 minutes 17 remaining, the DPS is very tight. And in this specific part, I countered, I cast a Thigh Rain, but it just so happened that Valton decided to do a jumping axe and I missed Thyrain, so I lost about 100 million damage for free. And this is where, you know, DPS matters because um, if stuff like that happens, you can at least make up for it. So in right here, you can see that he did the three silence counter animation. So the very first one, I'll show you how much it damages me with. There's a reason why people time stop at least one of these hits. The very first blow did 58,000 damage, and I was running low on HP pots already. So what I had to do was, I had to time stop the second hit. Also, in hard mode, there will be orbs that spawn, and as you can see on the floor, there are also explosions. So it's very important that you dodge all of this. And then right here, make sure that you land the counter. And here, I landed it correctly. So I was looking at the time. With 2 minutes 20 seconds remaining, I figured that I had to start throwing darkness grenades. In most solo buses or runs, you don't see three portals, but <laughs> as you can see, um, three portals happened and a lot of time was burnt. So I was in a very, very serious race against time right, right here. And I was also down to one HP pot. This was a pretty close call, but I potted up because I saw the animation happen. Like to be completely honest, um, you normally don't see this many mechanics. I just got very very unlucky with RNG. So 
So I have about one minute to burn 16 bars. Um, normally I would have already met this if I landed my Thyrene. But because I missed, uh, we get to see what happens next. Again, you know, you can see the lines thinning out. Here you can create some damage. Because if you're solo, it's not that bad. So what happens when Valton is on the edge of the circle? What can you do about this? The only way you can really do anything about it is to face towards the center so that Valton does uh, his next mechanic towards the center. Again, you know, does the help mechanic a second time within like 20 seconds. And here, Valton went in rage, and I still had to pump about 10 more bars of damage. As you can see, one swing did 45,000. Um, for grab, if he's angled like that, the only way is to go on the other side. Again, you know, Spin does a decent amount of damage because Fulton is now enraged. So it did 13.3 thousand to me. And it's very important that when Fulton's enraged, everything is faster. So keep note of it. Everything is faster, including that mechanic. So you make sure you dodge the portal. Fulton's gonna slam down really fast. Dodge that, dodge that. Dodge that, dodge that, right? And you can just walk out the outer edges and get ready to go in, right here. Explosion happens a lot faster too, for this one as well. And then, there you go. You successfully beat Enraged Fulton. Um, for this, if you're a gunslinger, I recommend putting Quick Prep on your last request. The first grab usually happens at bar 40 or around bar 39. So keep that in mind. Again, I have no pots here, so I have to be very careful with my movements. Front, back, front. And then I have to make sure I land this counter. So I threw out Thyrain after two armor breaks, which is not that bad. Counter here. I'm just doing a cross. Right there I missed the counter because I mistimed it. There are ways where you could just angle yourself so that even if you miss the counter, that you would still be able to survive. Remember, all the ghosts that spawns from Valton themselves will always face towards you because you're the only person in here. So, spin happens. From back front, another ghost spawns. Slide the counter there. He has three more bars of armor left. Just keep DPSing. Make sure you land the counter. Again, as you can see, Valton did a cross, but you can angle these ghosts to face towards you into a safe spot. So you can land the counter. 
Over here, I'm greeting for damage because I realize I'm running low on time. And over here, I almost died. Um, played a little bit risky. Shouldn't have gone hit right there. But you know, you gotta get your counter so you can get your side reel gauge. Over here, I realized that if I was to get hit by a spin, I could potentially die because I only have 2000 HP. Over here, it's about to enrage. Gotta make sure I land my counter. Again, you can always angle the ghost into a safe spot. Luckily, uh, Thyrene came back up, so I casted it if I went for the counter. I landed both, and this resulted in a clear. Alright. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I didn't expect to reach Enrage for Wolf, Voltan, and Ghost Phase, but you know, I managed to pull it off, so hopefully. You guys all learned something about vault and busing with this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.